Good morning. We were learning about the president of India in the last classes. And we were learning about the powers of president of India. Today we learn the legislative powers of the president of India. The president has vast powers, number of legislative powers he enjoys. Some of the legislative powers of the president of India. First one. Summons and provokes the parliament. President only has the power to summon and provoke the parliament. Last class we have learned about a parliamentary procedure that is session. We have learned the session. President only has the power to summon sessions of parliament calling the meeting of uh, each house of the parliament that is called a session and only president has the power to summon a session and similarly he only has the power to terminate the session of the parliament that is called a prorogation so president has the power to summon and uh, prorogue the house of parliament it is prorogue The sessions of parliament, that is uh, one of the uh, legislative powers of the person. It is summoning and prorogging that is related to the legislation. So that is legislative power of the president. Another legislative power is he can address the sessions of the, uh, he can address the house of parliament. President can address the sessions of parliament. He can address uh, either house of the parliament. The president address the parliament normally after the general elections. After general election, when the parliament uh, summons first time, when the parliament uh, conducts this session first time, the president address the parliament. Then again, uh, every the first session of every financial year, the first session of every year is also addressed by the president. In addition to that, the president can address either house of the parliament uh, when he feels it necessary. So president has the power to address sessions of parliament or either house of the parliament. This is uh, one of the legislative power of the uh, president. It's also the presidential address also comes in that only president presidential address. The president address the first session of parliament every year and in the first session of the parliament the government announces the policies. The cabinet is the main policy making organ or policy making body of the government. So cabinet prepares the policies of the government. Policy of the government means internal policy as well as external policy of the government is prepared by the cabinet. And this policy is officially read by the president in the first session of the parliament.
and this is called the president's address so president's address is also legislative power of the uh, president so it is mentioned here address the sessions of parliament so this uh, same presidential uh, president's address or presidential address that also comes in that way at the same okay so present presidential address or uh, presents president address the sessions of parliament uh, or are the legislative power of president again president can send messages to either house of the parliament messages president can send messages to the to either house of the parliament mainly regarding the the finalizing of pending bills if pen, uh, bills are pending in the house then the president can send a message uh, demanding the house to finalize that the pending bill so president can not only really on finalizing the pending bills on various matters president can send a message to the Uh, house of Parliament. President can ask uh, information from the House of Parliament regarding various matters. So, President can send the messages. All this comes under the uh, power of sending messages. President can send the messages to either House of the Parliament. Then, President can dissolve the laws. Person can dissolve the Lok Sabha. You know, Lok Sabha is uh, a temporary house where a Rajya Sabha is a permanent house. Lok Sabha dissolves after five years normal time. But the person can dissolve the Lok Sabha on the advice of Prime Minister. After five years time, uh, the house is suppose the house has completed its time. Then after five years, the person can dissolve the Lok Sabha. Uh, before that also, on the advice of Prime Minister, person can dissolve the Lok Sabha. If Prime Minister advises the person for the dissolution of the, uh, the house, then person can dissolve the Lok Sabha. There is a question: uh, By whom and on whose advice the Lok Sabha can be dissolved? By whom and on whose advice the Lok Sabha can be resolved? By whom? By the President. President only can resolve the Lok Sabha. And on whose advice? On the advice of Prime Minister. So the answer is on the advice of Prime Minister, the President can resolve the Lok Sabha. Now, okay, we were learning about the dissolution of the Lok Sabha, President's power we are learning. So, uh, one condition we have planned after the completion of uh, five years. Later. Okay. Then, before that, suppose if a word of no confidence is passed against the government, then the ministry has to resign, and the ministry is not re uh, ready to resign. The president can remove that ministry. The president can uh, dissolve the uh, house. The president can remove the ministry. So, there also uh, the president. Uh, Uh, dissolves the house, removes the uh, house. So, president has the power to dissolve the Lok Sabha. This mainly on the advice of uh, prime minister. Okay. Then, uh, regarding bills, some other uh, legislative powers regarding bills. bills assembled to bills no bill becomes an act without the assent of the president without the consent or without the signature of the president no bill becomes an act that means if a bill is to become an act then that should get the signature of the president if A duly passed bill 
is sent to the president during past bill that means if a bill uh, which is passed by both house of the parliament other than any okay if a bill uh, which is passed by both house of the parliament is sent to the president the president has to give his assent the president has to give his signature on that bill and after getting the signature of the president the bill becomes a law okay but if a bill is sent to the president for his assent the president has some options the president can give his assent that means the president can uh, sign on that bill if he is signing then the bill becomes an act another option that is the president can send the bill back to the house for reconsidering the president can send the bill back to the parliament asking or demanding the the parliament to rethink of that bill or to reconsider of that bill or to make some changes demanding to make some changes that is uh, reconsider so uh, the president can send the bill back to the parliament for reconsidering the bill and one more option is left uh, before the president if a bill is sent to the uh, president that is the president can withhold that bill the president can present neither gives his assent nor sending the bill back to the parliament the president keeps the bill with him that is withholding the bill so three options are there the left before the president if a bill is passed by the parliament he is sent to uh, him for his assent the first option what else the president can do if a bill is sent to the president first option he can give his assent second option he can uh, send the bill back to the house for a, a reconsidering and the third one is uh, he can withhold that uh, bill okay that is uh, about regarding assent to bills then another legislative bill is sometimes the state bills also sent to the president for his assent normally the bills passed by the parliament is sent to the president for his assent but sometimes the bills passed by the state legislature is also sent to the president so that is normally not happening sometimes in states in states for a state governments if the state legislature is passing a bill that bill is sent to the governor for his assent okay normally it is happening just as the uh, union parliament what is happening in the union parliament the same way administration the state also happens okay that is because these are uh, similar uh, the union legislature and state legislature working in similar way so what all procedure is adopted or what all procedure is taken in the union parliament mostly the same procedure is taken in the uh, state governments also so if a bill is passed by any of the state legislature it is sent to the governor for his assent and governor gives it his assent sometimes if a bill passed by the state legislature is sent to the governor the governor is not giving his assent instead the governor forward the bill to the president for his assent okay in such case also uh, the president has the option the president can give this uh, assent or he can uh, send the bill uh, to the state legislature for reconsidering so uh, mostly the, the president signs on the bill whenever a bill is passed by the parliament or the state legislature is sent to the governor the president uh, for his assent normally the president gives his assent in rare cases only uh, the president is sending the uh, bill back and in rare case only in very rare case only he is uh, withholding the bill normally it is not happening but if the uh, there is a clash between the president and the union cabinet then only the withholding the bill that happens and then normally it is not happening uh, okay uh, it is it happened during the time of uh, uh, president gani sir singh 
uh, during the time of President Reddy and President Gyani Sir Singh, uh, some bills passed by the UN cabinet was uh, withheld by the uh, President. Normally, it is the duty of the President. The Constitution says that the bill is passed by the Union legislature is sent to the President. The President must sign on that bill. He can uh, send the bill back to the Parliament for his uh, what is called uh, for the uh, reconsideration. But the same bill is again sent to the President. Then the President has to give his assent. Uh, that is the constitutional provision. Uh, anyhow, uh, what we are learning assent to stay is assent. Bills are related with the creation of a new state, creation of a new state. Okay. Creation of new states or 
marking the boundaries of an existing stage should be uh, should be submitted before the president for his assent this type of bills can be introduced in the houses only with the permission of the president with the recommendation of the president only bills are written with the creation of states or altering the boundaries of the existing state can be introduced just as money bill is introduced it needs prior permission from the speaker or president similarly these bills also need prior permission from the president okay then uh, another power ordinance okay and ordinance we will learn also those ordinance is uh, some another one is uh, nomination of members governors of the state also has the power to uh, promulgate ordinance 
save us uh, the presence uh, of our audience. So, the executive board is issued by president at union level and the governors at the state level are known as ordinances. An ordinance can be issued when the parliament is not in session. When both the both houses of the parliament is not in session, the president can issue an ordinance or the president can issue an executive order. Such an order is called an ordinance. Okay, what is ordinance? An executive order issued by the president is called an ordinance. When can the president promulgate or when can the president issue an ordinance? The president can issue an ordinance when both the house of the parliament is not in session. Okay. When both house of the parliament is not in session, uh, bills cannot be passed. And if, a, uh, and the, if the parliament is not in session and there is an urgent need of a, a law, then the only alternative is the president can uh, promulgate an ordinance. Okay. Such an ordinance is equivalent to an act passed by the parliament. Ordinance is important. Reason. An ordinance is equivalent to the act passed by the parliament. But the difference is the difference between ordinance and an act is ordinance is a temporary measure only. Ordinance is a temporary law only. It cannot be considered as a permanent law as the law passed by the parliament. Why it is temporary law? Because it is an order issued by the president only and the members of the house have not discussed the matter and the members of the house have not uh, uh, passed that bill. That is why this is this remain for a short period only. The ordinance remain for a short period only. It is called temporary measure because if, a, if an ordinance is issued by the president, it should get the majority support of the parliament in order to uh, become in the same effect of a law. If a law is to be passed, that must get the, uh, the support of majority of the members of both houses of the parliament. That is the way. Okay, if a bill is uh, passed with majority support in both houses of the parliament, then only it becomes a law. So similarly, ordinance, ordinance have not got the majority support. It was just uh, promulgated by the president, but it is equivalent to a law. The, the conditions after promulgating an ordinance is the conditions to be uh, faced by the ordinance is if an ordinance is passed by the president, it must uh, prove majority support within six months of the, the ordinance. Within six months of the passing of the ordinance, the ordinance must be discussed in both houses of the parliament and it must get a majority support. Then only it will continue as a law. So the life of an ordinance is six months only. Why it is six months? Because in the sessions, when we were writing the sessions, we have seen there should be minimum two sessions a year. And what should be the interval between these two sessions? That should not be more than six months. The gap between two sessions shall not exceed six months. So anyhow, after the promulgation of our ordinance, within six months period, there shall be the next session. And in the next session, the matter of the ordinance should be discussed in the house. The members of Lok Sabha and Rai Sabha, the members of parliament must discuss the matter of ordinance. And they, they will discuss, they will debate on the matter and they will put the matter to vote. And if it is getting, this ordinance is getting majority support, then it becomes a law. Suppose when the ordinance, the matter of ordinance is discussed in the house 
and uh, one house is supporting, the other house is not supporting, or majority of the members are not uh, supporting the ordinance, then the ordinance will lapse. Ordinance will cease to operate. It will not be in effect anymore. That is why the ordinance is and thus a temporary measure. Is clear? Okay. So ordinance can be issued by the president only when the parliament is not in session and the executive order issued by the president is called the ordinance. Uh, okay. That's all about uh, the legislative power of the president. So what today's topic is our today we will say just uh, legislative power of the assembly. You read, uh, read these uh, points and learn these points well, especially in an uh, ordinance. Okay, ordinance is an important uh, legislative power of the assembly. So you learn from these points, especially the uh, point ordinance. Okay, thank you.